Uh, well, we have the horsepower, and now we can get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> Is that great? That's great. All right. <laughs> It's been a successful road trip, but Ed and Keith are worried. Everything about their run for the record is filled with unknown. Will the afterburner light? Will Steve Green's wheels explode? Will Jerry's brakes actually work? Now, Ed and Keith have to rush back home to Spanaway. The critical test run is just six weeks away, and there's much left to do. It's another Saturday morning at the Spanaway hangar, but today's different. Today, the engine's installed. Any mistakes, and the test run could end in disaster. But before the engine can go in, the 680 kilogram tail cone must come off. Give me a sign here, boys. Are we doing good or bad? Let me know. It's a delicate operation. Damage the tail cone, and the run's off until a new one can be built. I think you've got more load on the rear than because of the tail spars than, than just in case we're supposed right. to put a clamp here up there in right. case of okay. blows over forward. Alright, we're gonna find a strap. That completes the generator circuit. That goes yeah. which F. At the same time, inside the fuselage, Bill and Steve are finishing off the wiring. No. For what? Uh decals are inside. On the decals are gonna have to wait. Alright. Just let them know that, that I'm in the process of doing the wire bundles. But back outside, there's a problem. Yeah, that nut should be tight on the side over here. The ring that secures the tail comb to the car is coming apart. Right now, the car's rear axle is attached to the ring. If the ring separates from the vehicle, the 7,200 kilogram car will slip off the axle and crash to the ground. Well, yeah, if this thing separates, then the, the fuselage section of the car will come down to the ground. No support. It won't have any support. It's completely supported on this ring here. Welding expert Bernard McVeigh has the job of keeping the ring from separating from the fuselage. We're going to jack it up now and slide down. All right. With the jacks in place, the tail cone can finally be removed. Okay, Houston, we have separation. Now, it's time for the main game. The massive J-79 jet engine. All 1,800 kilos of it. Okay, at this point in time, we've got the fuselage leveled up and set on blocks and ready for the engine to be installed. The engine is moved up in position that will roll this forward into the, the uh, skate track and then we'll slowly move the thing in and uh, we'll be checking clearances as we go. But getting the engine in is no cakewalk. Everything's got to be lined up to the millimeter. It's tight in there. Mm -hmm. you got about that much space around the engine to get your arms and tools up in there. It's, it's bad. And it gets worse. There hasn't been an engine in this fuselage since it was demilled in 1971. And after pulling it out of the scrapyard, Ed and his team rebuilt it. If they made a mistake, even the smallest error, the engine won't fit. After hours of prep at the Spanaway hangar, the Eagle's massive J-79 engine is ready to go in. It's a tense moment. There hasn't been an engine in this car for nearly 35 years. The question now, will it fit? If it doesn't, the test run will be canned. I guarantee you we will not have room to work up there. It's so damn tight. The man in charge of getting this 1,800 kilogram hunk of steel back into the car is team mechanic Big Bill Eckberg. 16 years on Boeing's flight line. You got lock, Russ? Uh, yes. Okay, let's Ready. roll it about a half inch. Keep going real, real slow. That's creeping. That's creeping. Too fast. Bill's first challenge is hooking the top of the engine onto the skate track that will guide it down into the fuselage. Okay, roll it. Uh, so we're gonna land on his tires before we're gonna have a quarter 
or nothing. It's not a little pin to stop pin. You gotta pull the stop pin out down right. But nothing's lining up. Stop it, guys. See, we're in trouble. What? Because uh, if they stopped at the vehicle right now, we're... How far from the track are we? We'll slip right off the end of the track. Our ass end needs to we're go... Like 50% off. Our ass end needs to go port. Our... I, the ass end doesn't have anything to do with this. We are right on the lip. We need no, to go in okay. another couple the of engine inches. The engine is not in perfect order. Let's keep talking about this. So Ed and Bill decide on a risky maneuver. To line the engine up with the skate track, they're going to jack up the car. Now that's for sure. We're getting there, boys. Okay, bring it forward. That's perfect. All right, now we got the seat. Okay, now we leave that right there. Finally, the engine's on the rail. For the next four hours, millimeter by painful millimeter, they struggle to slide the engine into the car. Back it up. Back your okay, we have the engine about three quarters of the way installed. We're having to overcome little interferences, but it's just indigenous to that engine fitting in that particular fuse. Like it's a very tight fit. So we have a lot of little things to move out of the way and inch our way in. So we're going in in small increments. So we're about three quarters of the way in now, and it's uh, getting pretty close to locking her down. So we, we feel really good about the way it's coming out. So. Just keep working at it. Okay. All right, slow, slow, slow. Okay. If you feel any resistance on the starter side, okay, watch out, guys. Way out to the top of the Then, nearly 10 hours after they started, it's done. The J79 jet engine is locked and loaded. Congratulations on getting this job done. This is fantastic. It's a milestone that we really needed to achieve. And here's to the whole team. What a job. Yeah. It's an exciting moment for everyone. But the real buzz will come in just a few weeks when they finally light the Eagle off on its first test run. But what no one realizes now is the massive problems that lay ahead. It's been three months since the engine went in. Three months of frustrating delay. With the Eagle ready to go, their test site fell through. The people running it feared a disaster. After searching the continent, the team finally found another site. Now, it's crunch time. Time for the North American Eagle's first test run. The new test track is a 1500 meter runway at a tiny airport just a few kilometers from Mount St. Helens, Washington. It's short, but it's all the team could find. There's another problem. The weather. The delay has pushed the test run into late November when the first real cold and heavy rains come. Either could shut everything down. Despite the problems, the team is pumped. Yeah, we burn that much fuel, we make that much noise, there's a certain amount of testosterone involved. When I started this project, I had hair. You know, I'm starting to look like my dad every day. I've been looking forward to this for going on three years now, so we're on a roll. When you hear this jet engine light up, you will just be absolutely amazed. But before they can light it up, there are a million checks to run. We're not tripping the relays to fire the, uh, the pumps. One has turned up a fault on the fuel pumps. They're not grounded, and the engine's fuel igniters aren't working. We weren't getting any fuel fault, so we gotta solve one problem first. And once we have this done, then we'll go and do the igniters. And once we've satisfied that, uh, that criteria, then we should be ready to tow it out and start running the engine. Getting these details right is absolutely critical. There's no money for wind tunnel testing. Everything on the Eagle, from the steering to the parachutes, must be tested under real conditions, out here. So, after you run the pump, then you'll open the gate, then I'll open that gate to verify that it has pressure. Yeah, somebody else standing over there. Yeah.